Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Let's talk some more about Azure Data Studio. It's actually a pretty cool tool. There's a lot going on with it. Um, if you go and look at some of my previous videos, you can see some of the stuff going on. Please make sure you subscribe because if this information is useful to you, there's more and more coming. So you want to keep track of it and be on top of it. Subscribe, hit that little button down there and um, subscribe. Moving on, Azure Data Studio. Did you know that you can customize the views in Azure Data Studio so you can actually take direct control over how it displays information? You can. Let's go check it out. I'm already connected up to Azure Data Studio and you can see that this is the server dashboard showing me information about my server. And I've already got things like the tasks such as a restore, um, a, the list of databases which I can search, uh, the backup status, and then the database sizes themselves. Now what if on this window I wanted to see that my top five queries? Is there any way to get that in there? And the fact is, there is. Now normally I would say go for your top five queries is, is looking at Query Data Store. That's usually the best bet. But in this case, I'm just going to use the um, stuff inside the DMV. So here's how we're going to do it. First up, I need a new query window. And I've already written the query. We're going to select top five text and execution count from the DMVs to bring that stuff back and we're going to order it by execution count because I, I really care about the queries that are most executed in this case. I mean, different, different things in different situations. So we run this and we get back the information that we asked for exactly as we asked for it. So, so what are we going to do? Well, first, let's make sure that we saved this because we need to make, you know, this has to be saved um, someplace and we're going to call it, um, you know, top five execution count and hit save. So now that's saved. Now if we were to run it again, we get the data, but what we want is not simply this data. What we want is a, is a pretty graph. We need to be able to see this information in a graph format. Well, if we look over here to the right, you can see that we have save as CSV, save as Excel, save as JSON, and chart. So we click on chart, it brings us up as a nice little bar chart. Um, we can leave it that way, or we can make it a horizontal bar chart, whatever we want it to do. Um, and we can use the first column as a label. Let's go ahead and do that. And so now you see that it's got the labels laid out, and it's, they're not, this isn't the prettiest bar chart in the world, but it's basically getting us what we need. I've got each of my things so I can see what's going on. Now I could have no legend at all, and I can still see each one. So that makes it a little better, a little easier to see what's going on. So probably that's what we'll go with because it's just cleaner. Now, how do we get this back over the other page? Well, it's, it's not completely straightforward. The first thing we need to do is take advantage of the fact that this thing knows that I might be putting this together this way. Azure Data Studio is providing us a way to create an insight. So let's do that. Now you see it gives it a name. We're going to modify that, so call it um, top five executions. And then it shows the basic layout, the grid, whether or not it's a horizontal bar, and all of the other information. And it's going to show you where I'm getting the query from. Right now it's coming from my GitHub source control top five SQL. So you can see everything is laid out as needed. So now let's take this and let's copy it. So now that's copied. Now, if we were to come back here, what do we do? It's not immediately clear. What we're looking for is control comma. All right, so we get to here, what we need to do is we need to track down the dashboard. Now, there are dashboards for all different kinds of things. I've typed dash into the search settings. And if we look over to here, we can see dashboard database properties, dashboard database tabs, dashboard database widgets. But I, what I want to look at is my dashboard server widgets. Now you can't directly edit this config. So what we have to do is copy this to the settings file. So now that takes our dashboard server widgets, copies it across the screen to here, where I've got direct control. So I can very easily hit comma, paste, and save. So I've now added in the JSON from my thing into the server settings. Let's see if it worked. We now see 
maybe not placed in the best spot, but we now see my top five executions. And so it's completely there. It's absolutely accessible. And I can take direct control over my screen and manage it as I see fit. And yeah, if you click the edit button, we can then go in here and rearrange things. Let's put that at the top and then that right here. And so now I can see my top five executions by execution count, easily laid out, easily put together, and I can do more from there. By the way, I kind of didn't mention it, but if you want to learn how to configure the dashboard, basically how to take control of this and do it yourself, um, there's documentation on it as well as this video. Now don't run away, we're not done. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, it's very important. Last thing I want to say is that that customization gives you a lot of capabilities. You can do a whole lot with it, um, changing the way you're looking at the and observing your servers and controlling your databases. Uh, as a developer, and, and I really do like to focus on developers here because I feel this is more of a development tool than a management tool. There's information you're going to want. Now, I, I showed you how to get some performance information, but there's also other types you're going to want to pull from. And so it's just a question of defining the mechanisms for doing that monitoring and then building out the, the monitoring uh, itself so that you guys can keep a track of what's going on inside your Azure Data Studio. It's a great tool, um, a lot of uses, and there's going to be more videos coming up on this exact topic, Azure Data Studio. Thanks for watching. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.